In the last video we talked about calibrating the robot. In this video I wanted to quickly go over a little bit of programming. Um, over here on the left side you can see this is our list view for our program where we can add lines to the program. We can play the program or just step forward or reverse through the program, stop the program. This field here shows you what row you're on. Um, I've set it up so that it throws in a couple of lines on the program. Uh, the first one is just a comment, says beginning of program, and that occupies row zero. And then tab number one occupies uh, row number one. When we get down here into our buttons, I have teach new position. So I could jog the robot to a position and then teach new position. And we'll add that position uh, in line here as a, uh, a move J command. Um, and then we have a teach replace um, selected. That will replace the selected move with wherever you're currently at. So if I have a move I don't like, I can touch it up, I can move the robot around and then hit that and that will replace the move that's currently highlighted. Um, we've got uh, move home and exit home. As we talked about in the last video, those are just quick uh, buttons to give you a quick shortcut to move off the rest um, and then back onto the rest. We have the delete command which will allow us to delete a row. We have wait time in seconds so I can make the program, make the robot wait for a certain amount of seconds. Um, I can wait for an input to come on or wait for an input to go off. Um, I've set up the Arduino sketch so that inputs 22 through 37 are set up for you to use. Um, we can set an output on or off so I can turn outputs uh, 38 through 53 on or off. Um, something to note here is that in uh, this particular setup I have a 8 channel relay board right here and I purchased that through Amazon I think it's made by JB Tech I think Sane Smart has the same unit um, but the interesting thing about this unit is that it is kind of wired in reverse of um, what you would typically think so a low signal turns a relay on a high signal turns it off so that kind of screws us up if I'm turning a, a motor or something then um, it's going to be on until I power up my board which will shut it off so what I've done is um, in my Arduino sketch let's look at the Arduino sketch here let me open that up so I've programmed it so when the board fires up the first thing it does is it sets outputs uh, 38 through 45 to high and basically that shuts all the relays off um, when the board fires up so outputs 38 through 45 I have those wired up um, to my relays um, and then when I want to use those relays I have to set the output to low so it's kind of the opposite of what you would think if I want the relay to turn on I set the the output off so you can come in here into the sketch and, and you could delete this section of code right here if you wanted um, if you're not using that same board or you don't want or you don't have a relay board that's using those first eight outputs uh, in reverse but I just thought that was something to mention there um, open my program back up and move that over here so basically the way I have it set up, if I want to turn one of those relays on, I have to set the output off because this board is reversed. You may have a different board where you don't need to do that. You can delete that section of code that I just showed you. Um, moving on, the tab numbers. So the tab numbers, those are a tab that you can jump to in the program that allows you to navigate and jump around. For example, I've automatically created tab number one at the top so I could build my program and then I could come down here and say jump to tab one. I could put that in here and I've got this row highlighted and when I click that then when it says jump to tab one it's going to jump right back to this tab. I'll go ahead and delete that for now. But that gives you a way to jump in the program or make loops within the program. Um, we have some if statements. If an input is on then it will jump to a tab or if an, if an input is off it could jump to a tab. So I could use some inputs and outputs or switches um, to control program flow based on inputs and outputs. Um, the program is also set up to control some servos. You can see down here I have servos. Uh, I've wired analog output 0 through 7 uh, to control the servo functionality. Um, so um, I could come in here and I could put a servo number and a position 
and drive that servo. So my gripper, for example, uh, my gripper, I have that wired to servo zero. And down here, I have some quick buttons that I've put in that allow you to drive servos just with a click of a button rather than from the program. So the manual servo toggle buttons, um, servo zero is tied to my gripper right now. So if I was to set that to 90 and 180, that should open and close my gripper right here. So if I hit that button, that will open my gripper. If I drive my servo to 90, that will close the gripper. So by the same manner, I could in my program put servo number zero, drive it to 180. I can highlight a line in my program, click on that, and that will put in this line that says servo number zero to position 180. So if I was to highlight that line and hit forward, it's going to drive the gripper open. And again, if I was to come in here and change it to 90, and of course your servos could be uh, you know, installed in any uh, position from typically 0 to 180. In this case, uh, my servo um, in the position I have it mounted in the gripper is 90 to 180. So I could come in here and put servo number 0 to position 90, put that in the program, and then when I execute that line, the gripper is going to close again. I'll go ahead and delete those out of there for now. Um, we can also call a program and return to a program and we also have the manual program entry field. The, uh, the manual program entry field is great for comments. Um, you can put in any comment you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be hashtags. It just has to be something that the, uh, the interpreter is not going to understand. Um, so it can't be a, a program line. It could be any text as long as it's not um, going to be interpreted as a move. But I typically just use a few hashtags and uh, put in could put that in the program and put a comment in the program or if you you know so desire to, to manually put in a, a command you could do that too so I'm going to delete that comment for now so let's start out with creating uh, a simple program um, the program is set up to automatically um, when it opens up it's going to give it the name new um, I'm just going to change that to uh, main and hit load program so when I hit main and load program, it's going to create a new program. And you didn't see any change here because it, it didn't change. But it will start out with a comment and tab number one. Now if I minimize this and I go to my containing folder where the source code or the executable is, you'll see it created that program main there. Come back to that in a minute. So in main, let's say that after tab number one, I want to exit the home position. So let's hit forward through that. And that's going to move the robot up off of the rest. Okay, so now let's say, now I want to, um, let's say I want to jump into another program and I want to make the robot move side to side. So let's create a new program, let's call it uh, side. And we'll hit load program. So now I've got a new program called side um, beginning of program tab number one. So at this point let's jog the robot uh, to the right and we'll just move it side to side a couple of times. So I will put um, steps to jog. Let's go uh, 400 steps and let's do that at 25 percent speed. So I'm going to bring it to the right. Okay. So let's teach that position. I'm going to highlight where I want the next row to be and I'm going to hit teach new position. It's going to put that position in the program. So then let's go back to the left and let's teach that position. Let's go back to the right and we'll teach that position and then go back again. So that'll be our side to side program. So now at the end of this program, I need to tell it to return back to the program it came from. So let's put in a return. Okay. So we've got our program called side. It will move these four moves and then it will return. So let's go back to our program that we called main. Hit load program and it's going to pull it up. And you can see that we exited home. But at this point, we need to call that program side. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put side and I'm going to call program. 
So it will call program side. It will run that program. And then let's say that we um, let's say that we want it to wait for an input. Um, I could put in wait time, but let's do wait wait for an input. So let's do input 22. I'll put 22 here. And we will wait for that input to come on. And now let's create another program. Let's call it up. So in this program, we'll move up and down. I'll hit load program, and that will create a new program called up. And again, if I go to the containing folder where my executable or my source code is, you can see this is where it's creating these programs where I've got new, main, side, and up right there. So if you wanted to uh, you know, remove these or delete these, you could come here to do that. Okay, so in this program, um, let's just say that we're going to move axis 2 up. Let's do 200 and again 25 speed. So we'll go up. And I will teach, I will highlight the tab and then teach that position. Let's go back down and teach that position. Teach that position. Let's say we want it to wait for two seconds at this point for something. So I'll highlight the uh, line that I want the next command to be under. And I will click that and it will put in a wait time for two seconds. And then, of course, I need a return to return back. So then let's go back to our program main. Load program. So here we've got call program side. We're going to wait for input 22 to come on. And then Let's call program up. Excuse me, up. Okay, so we've got program up called, and let's say this is the end of our program at that point. Let's say that we want to move back to the home position, and then at this point, let's say we wanted to jump back up to tab number one and run it in a loop so that it will run over and over again. I could come over here, jump to tab. I've already got one there. I could put that in place there. Um, so let's say, let's add something else. Let's say that, um, let's say after it comes back from program side, let's say we want the gripper to open and close. Um, so let's go servo 0 to 180. after it runs program side. We'll put that in there. Let's wait two seconds and then we will close the gripper again. Put that in there. Okay, so the robot right now is over here in this position so I don't want to um, get out of whack here. So let's just start here at move home start and hit forward. move the robot right back into its rust. So let's start at the beginning and we'll hit play and we'll watch it run through this program. So let's jump into the side program. Move side to side a couple of times. Then it will return to the main program. Open the gripper. Wait two seconds. Close the gripper. It's going to call program up. Oh, I'm sorry, no, it's going to wait for input 22 to come on. So here on my Arduino board uh, over here, I will wire 5 volts to input 22 right now. And it satisfies that condition and jumps into the up program, moves up and down. And then it will wait two seconds and it will return to the main program and put itself back into the rest position. starts over at the beginning and starts again. So that, at this point, I'll hit stop. The program will stop right there. Um, a couple things to note. Um, the return command um, will not work unless the, unless the call command has been called first. So, in other words, I can't just fire up the program from scratch, put in side, 
um, load program and run it, it's going to have nowhere to return to. It has to have been called first. Let me step forward through these moves. So we'll return here. So call has to have uh, has to have happened before a return will work. Um, another thing to note uh, quickly is that the uh, weight input on these inputs on the Arduino board seem to be very susceptible to any floating voltage. So um, it's probably a good idea to run those on a, a double throw switch and have that grounded out when it's not being used. Um, so that's all I've got for now on basic programming. Thank you for watching.